My name is Boshe Kalpan. I'm the coordinator of this project, uh, LEAP, uh, which stands for Linking to Europe at the Periphery. Uh, so uh, when we were planning this uh, project like four years ago, we thought that the European integration needs to be understood uh, in terms of the center perif periphery lines as well. So this was our main departure point, right? This is an event um, of European Union simulation, uh, basically the European Council, uh, to be more specific. Uh, it's, it is a part of the project called Linking Europe at the Periphery. In this event, we have one committee, which is the European Council, and we simulated the exact proceedings of the European Council with the topic of um, the war in Ukraine and the refugee crisis. Uh, to be honest, this is not my first time uh, as a uh, simulation. Uh, we have done this uh, simulations for the European Union and also uh, United Nations. Because uh, the reason is that uh, what I realize that we usually teach formally to our students. However, we, I just want them to leave how the European Union works how the Euro, uh, United Nations works. That's why we decided to uh, make this event, because it is a part of linking to Europe at the periphery project. When we decided to uh, make this project with my colleagues, Bashak Alpan, we said we usually integrate the academics to academics to each other. However, we usually dismiss the uh, student's perspective. Why not we make another component which is more beneficial for students. That's why this is, uh, idea emerged. And then we decided to make this simulation. Uh, and then uh, we thought, I mean, while planning the project, we thought we could understand how the notion of periphery uh, influences the European integration or how European integration is understood from the periphery. Uh, uh, it could be understood at three different levels, which actually uh, form the core of this project. Uh, the first one is how the EU is taught, uh, taught and learned uh, from the periphery. So it is mainly about how European studies are um, uh, uh, how European studies are created uh, at the periphery. And if it's periphery countries, I mean, I mean both uh, geographical periphery of uh, Europe, which means that we are far away from Brussels, uh, and also a structural um, periphery in the sense that there are more economic disparities and regional disparities uh, in the periphery. Uh, so the first dimension is the educational aspect of the uh, EU integration. The second aspect is how the EU is uh, experienced by the young people, uh, uh, how the EU penetrates to the lives of the uh, young population. So everydayness of Europe was our second uh, emphasis. And the third uh, dimension we were interested in was the uh, contestations regarding the European integration, how the EU project, European project is contested at the periphery. So um, while doing this, uh, we thought that if we are really focusing on the young population, uh, the best way uh, would be uh, organizing an EU simulation so that the young people would be, uh, would be willing to solve a pressing problem, which is uh, a part of the EU agenda. So this was our main uh, idea uh, while planning this EU simulation and the project in general. Good morning, Sorry to keep you waiting. Number one, yesterday, you will start by taking the water and then proceed to the opening speech. Poland, present and working. Greece, was that president voting or president? And to ensure a peaceful integration into our economy. Well, as you might have seen already, there are many uh, discussions surrounding this uh, 
particular event, the crisis in Ukraine and the aggression of Russia and its implications on Ukraine and uh, following a refugee crisis that resulted from this tragic event. And we thought that bringing a fresh perspective on the situation might help because we already saw what the, what the officials, what real officials declared and proposed. But we, sometimes we need a different perspective, an, an out-of-the-box perspective on this situation. And I think the young students who are passionate about uh, international relationship, relations are the best actors to be involved in such a, such a project. And it also helps them develop their skills because, as you might have heard from them, they are the future bureaucrats and eurocrats of their own countries. Um, since uh, since my second year at university, I've been attending and doing um, uh, simulations of Model United Nations and Model European Union. I think um, attending these events, attending and organizing these kind of simulations is very important to understand the international relations, um, politics and the international agenda in general. Also to see how diplomats, world leaders and policymakers think and act, especially for international relations students, but also students in other um, study areas as well. My main motive while coming here was active participation in this conference, which I believe I have succeeded in because I have actively engaged in negotiations, in policy making, and therefore in also raising new motions. So I think my goal has been met. My goal was to uh get more information, more knowledge about uh, European Union and uh, about these uh, processes in uh, international uh, space, ge geopolitics, because uh, this uh, simulation topic uh, about uh, Ukrainian refugees crisis is a very important and very critical issue. The first and most important thing that I like about this project is that I get to meet the people uh, from around the world and the fact that they're going to be the future leaders of the world and just interacting with them and sharing ideas with them. Uh, they will first of all learn other perspectives, right? Because it's always good to leave your uh, bubble somehow, go beyond this and uh, see how the other countries, other societies work, how they see the, the same problems or the same issues we are also confronted with. This is one important thing, to learn about other perspectives. The second moment is that uh, in terms of skills, it uh, helps you, uh, you know, to become more active in discussions, in um, um, talking, presenting your position, and also listening and uh, accommodating other positions as well. And the third uh, important moment is uh, to have uh, and to uh, to gain new friends, right? Because uh, this is a globalized world, and uh, in this world, uh, tomorrow's generation is not only uh, inside one country or one society, but it's across societies and countries. Learning by practice is way different than learning by theory. So uh, these kind of simulations uh, help the students to understand how the different institutions work. So uh, the best way to learn how these uh, uh, institutions work, for example, uh, the European Commission uh, is by uh, attending simulations like this. Okay, uh, the thing that uh, I like the most is about how everyone is trying to uh, find like an agreement and it's like by doing that, mm -hmm. uh, we're somehow becoming friends and then the simulation goes uh, beyond its limits, you know, it's like it's not only a simulation about the Ukrainian war and refugees, right now it's about uh, uh, connections with other people as well that we are creating here. Our doors are always open to Ukrainian immigrants. We have more than 7,000 Ukrainians, refugees in all countries, and we are open to this war. We hope that we will leave this place with the tangible results that will not only solve the refugee crisis in Ukraine in uh, Europe, but also would lead us to the end of the war. Thank you. From my perspective, I have done this kind of simulations eight years. And I had many students who participated in this kind of simulations. What I realized that uh, those who are seeking to be part of the simulation, 
has more ambition on uh, working in diplomacy or working on international organizations, NGOs, and those uh, people who achieved more than others who didn't uh, participate in any kind of the simulations, because you can realize their development as well, because once they attend this uh, source of simulations, they want to do more uh, for their future. So that's why I think this is a good motivation for me as a scholar to uh, make those students to leave this kind of like a, a environment. Although this is not like a, a real European Union, real United Nations. However, at least we can uh, provide them an opportunity which they can improve their skills, mm -hmm. enhance their knowledge about European Union politics, world politics, etc. This event actually uh, I was considering to go in into a diplomatic career and through with this in events and it makes us like more formal and the speaking more diplomatic way and actually I'm feeling right now I'm more comfortable when I'm speaking English before that I was so shy and I was like shaking in my hands but right now as you see here I'm not shaking it and so that. Well, first of all, I would like to point out that the topic of the simulation is quite interesting since it is current process and the war is still going on in Ukraine. So the most, you know, liked part of the project was topic. Second, negotiations and debates because it is really you know, interesting to get to know new people and their opinions, or their attitudes, and it was really interesting. As citizens, we tend to criticize our leaders, and sometimes we don't really understand why they take some decisions, why they act in a certain manner. So these kind of simulations are um, very crucial to understand why uh, certain world leaders or certain politicians do um, such things. Uh, it is also very crucial to enhance their um, diplomacy skills, negotiation, um, critical thinking skills. So as, an, as a simulation, it gives you not just um, one aspect of the international relations, but it enables you to get a broad sense of skills in just one event, basically. Well, the most I like the cultural diversity that I made with people from Romania, Kosovo, Ukraine, and so on. So it was very nice that experiencing different cultures, it's pretty nice. This is the best part of the event. The biggest thing I love about such kind of simulation games is that you can feel yourself uh, this kind of a guy who decides the future of the world and who decides how the world will be in the next few years or in a more longer perspective. In this regard, I think our students will definitely uh, be familiarized as well as deepen their knowledge and capacities uh, for the institutions, uh, for the policy at the European Union level, as well as other capabilities to negotiate, to be part of, uh, of uh, the institutions then to protect the national interests, you know, because the uh, European Union is a family of uh, different states. Those, uh, each state has its own interests and um, the protection as well as the coordination of these uh, interests is uh, uh, among the objectives. So those in, in, in the future, I think our students will benefit from the model we are organizing today, as well as other events which are foreseen for the future. I um, like to getting some perspectives from people that are uh, 
closer to the conflict, that uh, understand more this conflict because their situation in their own country is a little bit difficult and they are able to understand more than me. This, this was, this was the, uh, an important uh, point. My goals were to be active in, uh, in the debate, uh, to participate actively and to uh, interact with uh, different delegates in order to write our uh, resolution together and also our uh, country that we represented here, Latvia. I believe over here, the maturity level within the delegates is very high. Everyone has researched uh, on the given topic very well in depth and they're very well aware of their uh, country's stance. So therefore, I think the competitiveness level is high in this conference. However, I also think this is the good thing about this conference because when like minds meet, we have an amazing, brilliant sort of communication. Uh, I think that uh, this simulation is uh, the best way to learn uh, uh, more uh, practice uh, about how uh, international organizations are working. Because for example, in our case, uh, it was uh, European Union, European Council. Uh, so uh, this was a very productive day uh, to this uh, process. And uh, it's a great opportunity to get more information about uh, European institutions uh, and not only these uh, institutions uh, for about uh, countries' positions, so, I can say. All we need is a paper of sheet and something to write that up. And then we can turn the world upside down. It's a fact our world has a magic. The behavior of the Russian Federation is simply unacceptable. As most of the EU members, Poland has called out on the Ukraine or and Russia to put the weapons down. We now know that we have the support of Germany just in the only corridors. Uh, definitely what I already said as well as um, looking at things from different perspectives, especially me assuming a role of a different country is something I can learn a lot from. Uh, and to hear from uh, people and what they think or how they think we should approach a situation, which is really important right now, um, is definitely very beneficial to me. Uh, well, since we have a lot of discussions, uh, opposing uh, comments, uh, it uh, makes me uh, believe that the democracy exists in Europe and uh, that's how it is. So, uh, democracy is a value of uh, the European Union, discussions, debate, uh, and uh, anything related to it. Uh, I have been part of a simulation before this one, but it wasn't about the uh, European uh, uh, Union. It was about the UN, uh, United Nations uh, Security Council. And I didn't know much about kind of simulations like this one, uh, these kind of me uh, kinds of meetings. So I didn't know anything about the rules, how it goes, how they vote. I might have heard it on paper because I'm a political science student, but I didn't. I have never been like there to see what actually happens. And this is uh, uh, this is the practical side that uh, I kind of needed from my field of studies. And I got it here after three years of studying. <laughs> For those participants who are participating for the first time and wish to attend more simulations in the future, I recommend them to be more engaged in the uh, news about uh, news about countries, about international relations and politics. But uh, more importantly, it's about a, a common sense. When you try to act as a diplomat, it's basically very simple in the essence. You have to be kind to others. You never have to think that your own opinion and where your country stand is more important than other countries. So you have to basically be very objective, very kind and polite. That's what diplomacy is actually. And you have to be ready to compromise and cooperate. Um, that's the essence, I think. The second unmentioned word goes to Austria Foreign Minister. The second outstanding lady award goes to Head of State Belgium. <laughs> the last outstanding lady award goes to Head of State Czech Republic. And now, this was 
not going to be a surprise, I think, for the committee, but the best delegate award goes to Wendy Rappaport. <laughs> the delegation of Finland. Well, I mean, uh, this is uh, always uh, motivating for me. If I have good results from the students, I always uh, seek for more. I think for the future, I'd like to combine my formal education with non-formal education. This is kind of like a non-formal education part, the simulation. So basically, I think I will uh, seek to do in the future events, not for only uh, European Union maybe, but for other uh, international organizations as well or other subjects. Well, I want to say that I am amazed how good this event was organized in anything. I think that it was the brilliant combination of important things and also having fun. And this is the most important uh, for attracting the youth. I certainly believe that this project is um, very important and projects like this has to be more common uh, throughout the um, uh, throughout the world and in several other countries because it lets you connect with other people in a social way uh, and so it gives you a, a global network of communication which is again very important and I'm very glad to be a part of it actually and I would like to thank our project coordinators and the professors who are involved as well as the European Union um, for organizing such an event and um, a project. Uh, I really enjoyed those three days and I'm so happy to hear all these voices of young people discussing and debating about the uh, simulation topic. Uh, so I think it was, uh, it was a good idea to understand how uh, Europe penetrates to the lives of young people. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to hearing the winner of the simulation. Uh, I should say that this event should become a tradition, not just for this project, but for all projects that involve students and academ young academics, mm -hmm. because uh, international relationship, relations in academia is not about just writing articles and presenting them to a small or large audience, but it's about creating and implementing ide ideas for the future. So, I mean, especially after this EU simulation, we are basically convinced that it's not only the academics uh, who are trying to resolve this very po political puzzle about the perception of uh, Europe at the periphery, but it is also the young people. Uh, so simulation is a very inventive and very um, problem-solving approach to to issues. So I think uh, we will, I mean, the project uh, will have one more simulation next year, but as a, as a teaching method, as a, uh, as a research method, uh, simulations are great. It is very novel, it is very creative, so uh, I'm so happy that uh, the EU simulations are part of this project. You're welcome, thank you. I, without further ado, would like to declare SDG Model European Union Conference 2022 officially 